Hello, I'm TMN, and welcome to today's movie review. Twelve Angry Men tells the gripping story of a group of jurors tasked with unanimously verifying a verdict against a young boy's murder charge. At first, the answer seems obvious. The suspect is guilty. But when one juror steps up to suggest otherwise, fate falls in his hands to convince his fellow jurors that there may be more to the story than meets the eye. I'm just saying a coincidence is possible. And I say it's not possible. Twelve Angry Men was one of the first two black and white movies I purchased on Blu-ray, simultaneously. And in case you're wondering what the second one is, you'll find out tomorrow. But I can definitely say that if you only had to buy one black and white movie, I'd go with this one. Aside from a brief opening and closing scene taking place outside of the courthouse, much of this film is set inside the jury room itself. And as someone who loves films that are set in claustrophobic and enclosed spaces, I can definitely say that I love this film. This film stars a colorful cast of big name actors, with some of the most recognizable ones being Henry Fonda and Lee J. Cobb. Now Henry Fonda plays juror number eight, who must convince his other jurors of his not guilty verdict. And Lee J. Cobb plays juror number three, the not so convinced one. All of the performances in this movie are phenomenal, but I have got to give high props to Cobb's acting. As with the other ten jurors who immediately assume the guilty verdict, most of three's evidence is based on past experiences. For example, one of the jurors who himself grew up in the slums suggests that the suspect's rebellious upbringing would obviously make him the killer. And another suspect who wears glasses suggests that one of the witnesses' testimonies must be true because of her use of spectacles as well. But I find juror number three's evidence to be the most gripping, not just because the acting is great, but because his evidence is based on his role as a father. And seeing his conscience struggle against the justice system and his personal demons makes for a very fascinating story arc. But of course, we cannot forget the lead himself, Henry Fonda. This is a very tense film, as much of it focuses on one question. What if? As the story unravels and votes begin to change, we as the audience begin to realize that they may be wrong. And as one of the jurors suggests to number eight, they could easily be letting a guilty kid go free on the street. But that's what makes the film so good. Now the only time that we ever see the suspect in the film is briefly during the very beginning. And without even uttering a line of dialogue, we as the audience have already thrown in our guess as to whether he is guilty or not. Now this is a prime example of show don't tell. This film grips you in a way that very few films that I have ever seen do. You look into this young boy's eyes and you see what the other jurors see. Maybe he's guilty, maybe he's not. But it holds your attention in such a way to where you can turn your head away from the growing room of evidence that juror number eight is making. Plus this film features many great scenes. Some of which being the opening tracking shot, the knife scene, and juror number three's final rant. This film is about a room full of strangers. No one in the juror room knows each other, and we as the audience don't know them either. But this film does such a great job at revealing their personalities and letting us get to know them better. And this film really pits you as if you are sitting there among them, as much of the film is very up close and in your face and, as I said, claustrophobic. Twelve Angry Men is a movie that makes you think. And even by the end of the movie, the question still remains. Is the boy guilty or is he not guilty? And what makes this such a great film is that it leaves the ending open to interpretation. It's a sad truth that many people pass by black and white films, but if I had to suggest any to start off your journey, I would definitely go with 12 Angry Men. This film is gripping, filled with great performances, and it leaves things open-ended. The way each and every character works off each other is great. At the beginning of things, one juror, number seven, just wants to go to a baseball game, and he really just wants to throw in his guilty vote to get out of there. But the way the mood slowly shifts throughout the film, as votes begin to change, is what makes this so great. And I can definitely say that I give 12 Angry Men, wow. Well guys, that's about it for today's review. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for my review of Schindler's List. Be sure to leave a comment down below telling me your thoughts on the movie. Like this video, share it with your friends and family. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon to be notified whenever I post. And as always, subscribe. I'm TMN, until next time.